I'm Amy. I'm Wendell. And I'm Patrick. And this is Yes, But Why Podcast. Hey, Tessa, thanks so much for being with us on the podcast. We really appreciate you being with us. Hi, I'm really excited to be here and talk with you guys. Yeah. Um, thank you so much to uh, Brian Gray. Uh, shout out to him for connecting us to you. All the awesome people in Pittsburgh, after I talked to him, I was like, tell me everybody. I want to meet everybody. So I'm glad that he sent you our way. And then he was like, yeah. Well, Brian is amazing. He's yeah. a great force here in Pittsburgh. Good, good. He's like, check out this Tessa Carol, uh, Carell if you're a coffee shop worker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Corel, it's Corel to you. Yeah. Corel to the people who, who I don't care if you know. You know. <laughs> I also let people call me Tess. Oh. Um, who I don't like. People will call you Tess, and I have to consider: Do I need them to know that I want to be called Tessa? I just decided to let it go if it's somebody who I don't really know. If I'll see you again. You oh know? my god! Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I hear so, that. Yeah. No, I. I actually had somebody ask me, uh, there's somebody that I, I work with who has been uh, emphasizing the last syllable of my name. He, he, it's Wendell. And he's been oh, doing wow. that for a week. He's been doing that for a week. And then he just recently asked me, what is it, Wendell or Wendell? And I was like, I, you know, if you're just saying it kind of correctly, I'm all right with it. <laughs> I get a lot of people that want to oh. improvise on Wendell. You know, like Windy or Windex or win Window. Oh, yeah, uh, that would happen. Well, what about Wend? Do people just call you Wend? I see, or... that would be great. I don't know. I've, I've, I've brought up how I want nicknames <laughs> on the podcast a before. I want so a nickname bad. so bad. And, uh, like, I've offered, <laughs> I've like, I have a competition with my old roommate about gaining a nickname if I can do something before I die. Oh, my God. Um, before you die, like you're old. Well, I don't want to do the thing that he wants me to do, so I kind of figured it would be a retirement thing, you know? Like, I would get to retire with this nickname. Sure. So basically, I wanted the nickname Hawkeye, and the only way he was going to ah. help me do this is if I could, like, get good at archery. And, like, oh. in front of him, get a certain amount of bullseyes in a row. So it's like, I feel like I'm capable of doing so, but not, like, currently with, you know, like, everything I got on my plate. So it's... I always assumed that I would just get around to the whole archery thing in, like, my retirement years because, like, I only need two arms and, you know, I don't even have there to really to be, be able to stand to do that, I don't think. So, yeah, I kind of figured I would just be that old archer. There has to be another way you could get that nickname. See, I was thinking, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> you just get really good. Like with, what were you going to say? I don't know, like, a way that's, like, less, um, has less, like, um, I don't know, dependency on, like, your accuracy of like such a skill, like Hawkeye. Like I don't know if you wait. Was Alan Alda on Hawkeye? Drew... On... Alan Alda was Hawkeye on Mash. So if I could just get really good at become... Alan Alda have... impression, no, you'd have to go to med school and become a surgeon in the and Korean then hope War. That another war breaks. Yeah, out yeah, with yeah. Korea. Yes, 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 yeah, yes. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, so that's one way. Seems like a little <laughs> more likely for you to go to med school and then enter a war with Korea. It seems more likely than you being an archer. <laughs> I think that I that feels like a compliment. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take. It. Right, but what if you uh, like just drew a bunch of like hawk eye, like you know, close up of hawk hawk eyes, and then had like <laughs> like I don't know, and you're like, and you just doodled around a bunch of like cool guys who like were like, look at that nerd, hawk eye, something like that. I, I really became, want that art now. I became like a weird like Native American jewel jeweler who just only harvests hawk eyes and makes them into like brooches. And oh stuff whoa, like that. that's yeah. super detailed. I that feel like I can awesome, kill more though, birds I feel like than I could. <laughs> but then I can get good at archery. Just as hard as like being coming good at archery, though. I mean, or like yeah. Yeah, can you collect hawk eyes? It sounds easier than going back to med school in my old age. (laughs) All right, maybe. And then hoping a war breaks out with Korea again. I like the idea that in this med school, they're just like it's all these like young whippersnappers, and like you are like you're you're like twenty nine years old, and and they're like (laughs) and they're like, listen, old man. Look, I'm just gonna be cracking wise in the corner and ignoring (laughs) the obvious hellscape that I live in every day. That's all I'm here for, guys. You also could like be somebody who constantly sees small things. I think I am. I think I am. I feel like I'm really good at picking up 
like small differences in patterns is why I wanted Hawkeye in the first place, but uh-huh. that's harder to prove. Uh, like, like not necessarily like you could throw a box of toothpicks down and then I'd get all Rayman on it, but like I could tell you, like, oh yeah, there's like six red toothpicks. I think, I think like I'm good at that. I don't know. I don't. Well, know. this it's, sounds, this yeah. sounds like actually a viable path. Like <laughs> if we got a, thank you, like a big crowd of thank people you. around. I am, I really appreciate you saying that. Why are you feeding him? This is so crazy. Don't feed him. <laughs> I will him. die with Hawkeye on my on my gravestone. Okay. Oh, you will. <laughs> Even if I fake my death, let them bury me. Go carve it into the gravestone <laughs> myself, and then go actually. You know die. they'll put whatever you want on the grave. You buy I doubt it. it. I you buy true. it. Can I buy it ahead of time? <laughs> yes. Is that how it works? Can I just have my headstone like, in my living room? You probably should buy it ahead of time. No, that's a good point. That's a very good point. Yeah, you buy the plot, and you can even put it up before yes. you're dead inside yeah, of it. Because my family's like super broke. If it's like, if if it's like, they can save another three or four hundred dollars. Because I already bought this stupid Three headstone. Three or four hundred dollars. Aren't you sweet? Are it's like thousands. For just the headstone? Oh, yeah. All oh, right. yeah. If it's, not like a, if it's not like a pebble on the ground with like R.I.P. on it, then it's like very expensive. All right. All right. So, fair enough. <laughs> My aunt and uncles have a picture of themselves on it. Like, can you imagine? Like, it's a photo. Like, that they had oh, yeah. put into the, the stone. They're not yeah, dead yet. I've seen a lot of those. They're not dead yet, but their picture is on this gravestone. We were at... Oh, no. Yeah, it's super creepy. Because we, like, went to a family funeral, and their family all has plots near each other, well, right? Get us thinking. So they opened up... So they... Like, I'm walking by to the place where we're burying the one family member, and I was like, wait a minute, why is Aunt Mary's picture on this gravestone? Yeah. And they're like, oh, they just bought that already and got it set up. What? That's like calling your shot in the worst way. What? Like, that's where I'm going. <sighs> so crazy. That is really well, crazy. Well, maybe... I was just thinking about it because, like, I guess it could be for some people. I could see how it could be comforting, like, and I don't know. I would love yeah, I mean, hey, way. if you have a good like, relationship with be. death, go for it. Like, absolutely. If you're like, I bet you, if you're real, real religious, you mm-hmm. like it. Yeah, you're like, yeah, get me up there. What's yeah. up? Yeah, Hanging with I have the some angels. Family members who say things like that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I I pro- can, probably I a point, better way of dealing with it, really. Right, yeah. <laughs> but I point out to them because they'll be, they'll say like. I'm really excited to, or, you know, I'm getting closer to being happy in heaven or something. And then I have to, I try to point out, like, well, don't you think God would be sad if he didn't think that you were trying your best to be happy here? Like, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, you got to appreciate both, I guess. Right. Well, <laughs> that's, I'm imagining, like, the super sad, like, pearly gates. They get up there, they're like, sweet, let me in. And they're like... Uh, you didn't appreciate anything. Yeah, yeah. Super sorry. And also, it's like assuming that the whole life view that they've adopted their whole lives is like, what are they, you say that and they're like, oh shit, really, do you think that's how it is? Because I have not been doing that. I have not done that once. The whole time. I've never appreciated I, a damn thing. I have hated all of this and assumption that I would have better things when I die. Now, later. Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> What if instead of, like, my gravestone, I could just have, like, my actual dead arm sticking up out of the ground, giving the thumbs up, like, at the end of T- Terminator oh, 2? Oh, did you ever hear it? And then you could put flowers you, in you it? You might be able to have your real live arm come out of the ground. I mean, it won't be alive. It'll be dead. I, that's but, what I'm saying. Like, my, my dead, my dead like, preserved arm, like, with a thumbs up, like, it's the Terminator going down into lava at the end of T2, but, like, you could stick flowers in it. I feel like, I feel like teenage kids would stick bad things in it. They would break it off and do weird stuff with it, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, yes, I and. had a I had a relative <laughs> tell me that like you hit your mother, her hand will come out of her grave and hit you <laughs> later. Whoa! You know? Like I think Whoa. I was very little. Wait a minute. Wait. Okay. Yeah. So, Who says that to you? All right. Oh, so. I had a relative say that to me because I must have been like you know done some little kid like get away or something and they're like let's let's just say in this for a minute. Oh, let's just say in this for a minute. So, so the idea is that if that ever happened, the next time. After she died, and you like went to go say hey to the grave, um, like her hand would come out and hit you, or her hand would literally crawl up out of the grave and then come find you and then slap you and then crawl back to the grave. Yeah, like yeah, would smack you and then be like, and you'd have to remember like when you were little, like the one time you. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and then you go, ah, yeah, I had that coming. (laughs) I also was told that like if you look at yourself too much in the mirror, like a head will grow. Oh, that's awesome! Whoa! I know! 
it's just all coming back to me now. I mean, this is um, amazing. Not, like, this no, is this the is first awesome. Time I've rethought about it, but I haven't thought about it for a long time. That's really so, great. Making that's... me remember this stuff. Wait, wait. Is there is there like a specific religious oh background God. that that's connected to, or is that just like well, a? It came from a Catholic family, but like I, they mm-hmm. didn't say mm-hmm. things like that too often. There's okay. other things, you know, more like fearful religious related things yeah, that I yeah. could make oh, sense yeah. out of somehow with like all of the like by threading together uh, my the uh, Catholic. <laughs> my Catholic girlfriend was raised to think that if you watched a dog poop, you would get a sty, which <gasps> is like this blend of magic and science that I really like. <laughs> it like it like honestly that. There seems to be a logic to that. It's like pink eye. No, it really does. Like yeah. the idea that you're staring at poop as it happens is the same thing as getting oh, yeah. poop in your eye. You know, like, like a poop fleck could come up into your eye. Everyone deserves <laughs> the ability to poop without somebody staring at you pooping. Even a dog. Even a dog. And I think like there's there's a logic to that that I can just like as a child just be like, yep, never gonna stare at my dog's butthole. You know, like I, or whatever. Um, which well, what about like? Isn't it common to, like, I've heard that you get a sty by peeing in the alley. Peeing in the alley? Really? No. no. Never heard that. Which, which I also, just like you, was kind of like, I mean, this isn't quite like, I mean, there is some sort of connection where I was like, I don't know, if the alleys are dirty, and like, they're no. peeing outside, yeah. and they should be peeing somewhere else. No, yeah, no, I'm with you, I think. Yeah, I can yeah, maybe see that. everybody was peeing in the alleys back in the day, and it was like, I don't know. Well, see, yeah, it's like I like the whole "don't look at a dog while it's pooping" thing because, like, you're doing that with your eyes. It's like a sin that you're taking a part of. Oh, and with then your you're eyes. right, it's directly getting and then, and then chemically, God transfers the poop Man. from wherever to your eye. I, I don't know if the system works that way. Well, it's, it it's a weird about... blend of that. Yeah. That's so interesting. I was raised Catholic, too, and I feel like the only thing that I have was the idea of, like, all the saints being, like, the sort of like the mob. Like, it was just, like, a bunch of characters that were going to, like, come get me for different things. Like, it's like, oh, you better watch out. You uh, you don't want to get this person mad at you. Okay, sure. Like, this cast of characters. So the saints were, like, the opposite of what they were supposed to be for you. No, they'd protect you, but, you know, you got to earn their protection. You can't just be losing stuff. Like... Like, you can't just pray to St. Anthony every time you lose stuff if you're losing stuff constantly. Oh. St. Anthony's busy. Yeah, he's got stuff to given, do. Yeah, lots of people lose stuff. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't see, like, St. Anthony, he definitely was the most benevolent of saints in our family. Sure. Like, constantly, like, just say a prayer to St. Anthony. And, you know, I would sometimes be like, Tony, Tony, look around, find what's lost and make it found. And yeah. then I would find it. And I was, I just thought that he was shining a light on me. Oh, wait, I oh, would wait. lose things all the time. Did somebody give you that rhyme or did you make it up yourself? Because I've never heard that. I don't know. I think, I think it's both are possible. Not would, both. Would, would St. Anthony <laughs> be cool with being called St. Tony now? I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I like no, I bet you, I think someone told me it, because I was so fearful that I think if I would have called him Tony, like, he was just my buddy, without having heard, like, an adult or somebody call him Tony, <laughs> then I felt, like, it might have felt like I might have been, like, sinning big time. Yeah, oh yeah, God. yeah, that's real familiar with a saint who has magical powers over helping you find stuff. That's a real saint, though. Just yeah, a that's a real saint, yeah. Of losing stuff. Uh-huh, yeah. Okay, misplaced items. Yeah, legit. The yeah. state of yep. lost and found. Yep. Yeah, they ha- they even have a lot of people people who uh, have him as the patron saint will have like a little um, thing on their neck, like a little picture, you know, whatever amulet or whatever. What do you whatever. do when you lose that? Uh, you fucked. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, like, <laughs> you misplace your Saint Anthony statue. It's like, yeah, it's like what are we gonna do? Who are you gonna call? No one. No one's <laughs> coming to help you. <laughs> it's not working out. Don't call him Tony. Wherever he is. Oh my goodness. So Tessa, are you from Pennsylvania originally? Yes. Well, my family. Yeah, I was born in Denver, but that's just because my mother was doing a job in Denver, working for AT and T there while uh, for a few years. But I was raised in Pittsburgh, and my parents' families they've all been here for a long time. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Sweet. Oh, right on. Cool. So you've been hanging out there for a long time. Did you? Were you just born in Denver, and then they shipped you right back to uh, Pennsylvania, or uh, did you spend like <laughs> I was there a couple for, of like, first years? Three years. No, oh, right on. But I went to um, 